And like I said, what I'm going to tell the internet keyboard ninja warrior badass mofos out there is that my style of operation is very different than yours. I hit targeted combo windows. Hey, good morning guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to take a look at the Zygu G90. Yeah, I know I'm still pronouncing it incorrectly, but it rolls off the tongue easily. Uh, we're going to be looking at digital data mode communication with the G90. I am no expert, but I spent uh, the last few days really trying to kit out the build on the man pack and also dial in every single settings. I talked about this, I think, a few years ago where I said digital modes are very difficult. There's a ton of levers, and it's really a matter of figuring out how all of those work together. So I want to share with you all the settings, power metrics, um, probably even how I plan to use this radio. I'm going to be very clear, guys. I am not getting rid of my Yaesu FT81AND or 857D. This radio is serving a very different purpose. The radio you're going to see is actually not mine, but I did purchase two new G90s. I kept one for myself and I sent one off to my buddy Mike who does support the content on this channel a lot. And these are very much going to be secondary backup HF radios, but primarily I need it for some software development that I'm doing for my MCOM tools project. So I'm not endorsing the G90, but I will tell you, um, I actually kind of like this little guy. It's got a few quirks, but for budget radio, it actually has some features that are nice. And if you use it in the way that I think I'm planning on using it, I, I think it's actually going to work even with some of the heat issues it has. All right, let's take a look at some of the things I've done to support specifically JSA call for data mode communication. Before we take a look at the metrics, let's go ahead and take a look at some enhancements I've made to the overall kit. First, cosmetic change here. I color matched the 6x6 admin pouch from 511 to the main PRC 117 golf bag. And then this change for 11 bucks, changing out the stock VFO that's plastic and chintzy with this aluminum one I found on Amazon for I think 10 or 11 bucks absolutely is a game changer. This is a must have enhancement. For digital mode communication, like I said in the last video, I'm standardizing on the DigiRig Mobile. This is version 1.9 and this is the model that I run on every single radio. At first, I thought I was gonna to have to camp this at 90 degrees with the 90 degree brackets from ArmorLock, but it turns out just using the ArmorLock holster for the DigiRig mounted in this location worked out very well. I mounted it on the left-hand side, so I also moved over the BNC to the right, and the reason why I did that was that the USB cable that goes into the computer, I want it to mate on the right-hand side, and the reason for it is my field notebooks have both USB ports on the right side, so it makes the cable run a whole lot simpler. I also found that uh, adding the DigiRig on the back actually allowed the bag to be a much better fit. Okay, so I am very deliberate with my gear, especially when I go to vet out new gear like the G90. I'm not a fan of Chinese radios. I'll be on record. And like I said, this little guy surprised me. Um, I would not go out and buy it just yet. It's still very early. But I had some concerns about heat. So I decided to go and invest in an infrared sensor. So we'll take a look at that in a second. I also wanted to determine power consumption, and while the manual was a good starting point, having real-time data is essential using a good meter like the PowerWorks meter. And then I take a lot of notes. So let's start from uh, the very beginning. So for digital data mode communication, we're going to cover a few areas. And for the guys on Buy Me A Coffee, I'm putting together a dope card. This is the magic sheet that has everything that I have to make this fully work in a very tuned fashion, but I do want to walk through it. So the first thing I did was make sure that I upgraded the firmware, and what I'm about to show you will not work unless you upgrade the base unit and the head unit. I upgraded them to version uh, 1.79er Bravo 03, and the manual states that you should have the same version, but then between the, uh, the head unit and the main body, which you can't see here. That's not true because then they further say, in order to get some of the cat control support that you actually do need for JS8 call, you do need to upgrade just the head to version 1.80. And I did confirm that that is true. So this is what I'm running for the firmware. Now there are some nuances that I talked about on Instagram that I won't get into. So check that out on some issues I had with the firmware. I uh, took lots of notes on that process and uh, also in my field manual that I'm uh, putting together. 
all the settings we're going to talk about are very dependent on lots of factors. And this is why with the tech prepper stuff that we're doing over on the membership side, we're trying to standardize on kit. And yes, I'm the one driving it, but this is why we're picking reference hardware. We're using a, a version of the operating system and we're using standardized hardware like the DigiRig. So keep that in mind. I'm not going to get into Windows. Uh, what I'm showing you is how I kit everything out and how I plan to push my guys to run the same kit. So for radio settings, I found that you do need to turn off the auto gain control. It'll show minus minus right at the top. So you should see there right at the top center, AGC minus minus, and you can toggle that setting with AGC. In the newer versions of the firmware, we wanna make sure for all digital mode communication, specifically things like JS8, that we're always using upper sideband, even in the higher uh, HF bands like on uh, 20 meters and above. So you want user digital and the way that you can tell where that is is in the upper left hand corner and to switch the modes you can either use the hand mic or the uh, buttons that you can't see that are on the top right here. So for my particular needs I left the RF gain at 50 and that's just a long press of AGC. I do like the menu system on the Zygu guys. And then you could see it right there, and then we can use the VFO knob to manipulate that. For audio in and out, I use 10 and 13 respectively, and these are actually available from the global menu. All you have to do is a long press of the function button, and then go to, I think it's menu five. Nothing but the best production quality here. So yeah, five, you wanna set that to 10 and then out set to 13. Again, these are based on what I found based on my needs. Okay, so I'm running Ubuntu 22.10. That is the version that I have standardized on over the last few years for my MCOM tools software platform. And I emphasize the word platform. This is an offline air gap computer. And the reason why I'm not chasing every version of an operating system is because I don't need those features. I prefer consistency. So. We're not gonna get into a debate. I've been over that before with the Buy Me A Coffee folks on why this OS. So in terms of sound settings, I'm using ALSA and ALSA Mixer, and this is the magic formula based on this. So for speaker, we want 27, mic 37, left right capture 19, and then auto gain control set to mute or disabled. And the cool thing about this is that when you manipulate the speaker, you control the TX output power, and when you uh, manipulate the left right capture, it will control the receive power. So here you can actually see, we've got the DB set to about 60, nice and green where we want it. So I'll switch over to uh, ALSA, and you can actually see here if I increase the left right capture, we'll do 100, we should be read here on this meter. So a lot of people forget about the relationship between the input and the output and how that affects the uh, transmit and receive. So we're gonna back that down to 19. In my MCOM tool software, for the plug and play support that I'm starting tomorrow, uh, all of these settings when you select the G90 will be set for you. This is why this has to be a platform in MCOM tools uh, the platform I'm developing for off-grid communication is not a single application. It has to take over the entire thing. Uh, the user should only be responsible for having similar kit and for setting the radio per the dope card. And those will be put on something like this, these um, laminated field cards. Again, this is what I'm going to be working on for the members this month. All right, guys, I absolutely hate the Internet. There's a lot of misinformation on here claims like you have to use FL rig for this to work with JS8. That is absolutely false. So I use a different technique because I like to run all of the software with plug and play in mind uh, with the MCOM tools platform. And I'm using Hamlib, specifically something called R the Rig Control Daemon. And this is the magic incant incantation. So sudo rig cuddle D dash M3088. That's the ID for the G90. Dash R is the device. Uh, my plug and play support, I actually detect when a DigiRig is plugged in and I create a link. So I don't have to figure out which device number. I don't know why the community has not adopted this in any of the software. Again, this is part of the reason why I think a platform and a turnkey solution is required. Right now I'm running it manually, but in the other radios, when you plug it in, it spins that command for you 
up in behind the scenes. You don't even know it's happening. And then to trigger the PTT or push to talk, uh, I'm using the RTS signal on the DigiRig, and then the baud rate is the dash S argument set to one niner two zero zero. I'm starting also to uh, capture some heat. Uh, let's go ahead and do this together in real time. All right, so this system has been up and running for one hour and roughly five minutes. I do have a infrared heat gun, and I find where the heat buildup is actually on the uh, top of the base unit here and actually impacts the, the head unit, which is nice. So at first I thought it was going to be hot in the back end. That is not the case, so the zipper compartment does nothing for us. So 92 degrees, not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and jot that down. Like I said, I love metrics, so the meter here uh, also tells me total amp hours, so we're at 0.586 amp hours, so I went ahead and made a note of that right there. So basically, uh, half an amp is what we've used, and I'm using a 9 amp hour battery, so theoretically, we can operate for about 18 times longer. I captured the time just now, that's uh, 1305 UTC, and then the degrees of the head unit and the top of the main unit at 92 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the way that I'm also testing this, I'm running at 5 watts, have heartbeat acknowledgments turned off because this is a field radio, and then I'm heart beating or transmitting every 60 minutes. So I need to share with you a very valuable lesson. I found, and again, I did not do any research online. Uh, this is just my OCD going crazy. We're gonna go ahead and tune it, and I'm tuning it at the, the transmit level at the top of, of the, of the power capabilities of this rig. So we're gonna set that to 20 watts. Oh, come on here, man. 20 watts. And like I said, all of the settings we have here have been tuned for this in mind. We're gonna hit tune and we're transmitting right now. What you wanna look for is ALC to be at 100 here. And you'll notice that we're at 17.6 watts here. Um, I kinda like it at that level. And we can adjust that uh, piece by going back to what I showed you here, we can control the TX power by manipulating the speaker. So let's say we actually do want to get higher. Guys, this video is raw. This is all I have time for, so hopefully you find value. So we'll tab over to speaker, it's set to 23. Should have been set to 27. And now you'll notice we're at 20 watts. If I back that down, you notice that we end up having uh, less wattage. So the volume is er, is absolutely critical here in how we tune this, and that's too high. So I'm gonna put it back there at, what is that, 19.8. Yeah, and we're at 27. So this is why this is complicated. I don't know how you would do this in the Windows world. So here's an example of trying to tune using, I think I started with 10 watts the first time, and I was trying to get the ALC to 100, and then I saw that the G90 was actually putting out about 10.3 watts. So when I tuned it for 10 watts at 100 ALC on the G90, even when I set the power level to 15 and 20 watts, for example, and this was still at 100, I did not go higher than the 10 watts. And this is why I'm saying it's very, very important that when you tune it, you tune it starting at 20 watts when you want to get the ALC uh, dialed in. Now, I'm a practical, real-world operator. I do not believe in the hamster nonsense and the misinformation. So yes, this is a 20-watt rig, but since I primarily operate portable and I'm running my power in this little pouch, and in fact, I plan to scale this down to a 6 amp hour battery for Isaac, you'll notice here I've got 20 watts, 15, 10, five and one, uh, you can actually adjust in increments of one. So at 20 watts, I did a heartbeat uh, yesterday and uh, was able to get a plus two dB signal to noise ratio report, which means I could do voice. And that was drawing 4.32 amps. In general, at 20 watts with everything tuned, I am drawing much less current than the manual suggests. Um, I'm not at that, um, 8 amp level. So very happy I'm getting full 20 watts out uh, with only 4.32 amps with these settings. Now when I backed it down to 15 watts, my signal to noise ratio port was 0 dB and I was drawing 3.92 amps. At 10 watts, uh, this 
jump back up to 2 dB and I was drawing 3.57 amps. So not a whole lot of difference between going from 10 to 15 um, at all. Now 5 watts is interesting because I was just minus 1 dB and only drawing 2.86 amps. When I went down to 1 watt, minus 7 dB at 2 amps. So the reason why I'm showing you this here is that more power is not necessarily better. The sweet spot for me at 5 watts allows me to only draw 2.85 or 2.86 amps. And I have something that allows me pretty much to do voice and be very efficient. There's very little gain in me jumping up to 3.6 amps, almost 800 milliamps more, just to go up 3 dB. There is, that's like half an S unit. So keep that in mind. Also, Friday for us is gonna be 94 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna do a field test to test the heat here. All right guys, so that's just a quick tour of my first impressions for digital modes. I feel like I have it dialed in and I have basically set out to kit out the system for my long range communication with Isaac over at T-Rex Arms. Again, that's a 1500 mile contact. This was his radio, it kind of went overboard with all of the accessories, the man pack build, rewriting the manual, doing the dope cards, but I think there's value for the broader community because the G90 is still currently available. The radios that I love, the FT818 ND and the FT857D are discontinued. I trust those radios more because they've been on the market for a very long time on the order of 20 years, depending on which vintage we're actually talking about. You can't say this about the G90. Like I said, there is a few quality issues, a little bit of heat buildup. And like I said, what I'm gonna tell the internet keyboard ninja warrior badass mofos out there is that my style of operation is very different than yours. I hit targeted combo windows. Even for me to operate in the desert where the ambient temperature this Friday might be 95 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to set this up under a covered shelter, my tarp shelter, and I'm gonna run a combo window for about 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes and shut down. I'm not gonna be on there the whole time. Also, I run least power, so that five watts will work. In fact, one watt works with this JS8 mode, uh, so we can mitigate the amount of uh, heat that we're building up. Again, I'm also man portable, so I size my batteries differently. These guys that like to do parks in the air, which is fine, you know, do your own thing guys, but bring a freaking 100 amp hour battery, that's just not how I roll. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy this. I know I kind of went crazy with the tech stuff, and this is why I said digital modes are freaking hard. I almost did not get into this because I had a hard time personally getting into WinLink a few years ago, and the digital modes, a little bit of a challenge getting to APRS2 because I'm not terribly bright, but I do have a very methodical process where I try to walk through things in a logical order, capture data, metrics, draw conclusions. So we'll call it pseudo scientific method here, but that's the best we can do. Um, so like I said, I did buy two G90s. Uh, there's a very different place for those. Uh, I am not recommending this radio. I can't recommend anything that I have not used for several years. And again, this has inferior build quality compared to the Japanese radios that I love. All right, guys, I don't have any coffee this morning. I'm trying to cut that habit and switch to lemon and water. We'll see how that goes. But uh, appreciate all the support on buying me a coffee. This month's member stream is going to be freaking wild. Ask me all the questions about the G90. And then for you guys, I'm working on a lot of companion stuff for the G90 and uh, MCOM Tools R2 release is going to be a little bit late, but I think it's going to be better because now I know that the support I already have built in for the CAT control is going to work. All right, enough nerd stuff, guys. I'll catch you later.